Welcome, I'm your host, Darieth Chisholm, and I'm joined by our guest from our episode about preventing the summer slide. Thank you all for joining us for the show after the show. So digital media surrounds us in the devices that we use, in the toys our kids are playing with, and more often than not, obviously, in the classroom. But how can we make the most of the digital technology to help our children learn and communicate and innovate? So I'd love to open that up for discussion and look at the digital media and how it's playing a role uh, in preventing the summer slide. So we bring digital media right into the classroom at Summer Dreamers. Kids love iPads, um, interacting on the laptop. It really allows us to personalize learning along with teachers being there to guide students. And I would encourage parents to think about what their child's doing during the school day or during the summer and think about how they can extend that at home through digital media. Mm -hmm. And at the library? We offer a, a digital, we offer a smart table. And a smart table um, is an interactive table that's like this big iPad with okay. educational software and children can paint, they can play games on it. Uh, we also have something called the AWE Learning Station. And that has uh, educational software on it, but it has geography, math, everything that you can, uh, that encompasses STEAM for children to learn. And also we have computers with internet access. So we want parents to bring their children in the earlier the better. So that way they can see technology is, is broadened at the library. And clearly with Wonderopolis, they're online playing it. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the virtual summer camp we offer mm -hmm. obviously is digitally driven, but we encourage parents to own the fact that social media, that digital devices are in our everyday lives. So it really comes down to how can we use um, the tools that we all know so well for other purposes to further learning and education. What about ways to collaborate using digital media? I mean, I would think in this day and age trying to figure out the collaboration mm. efforts. So I want to put in a word about the Corporation for Public Broadcasting's Ready to Learn project, which really brings out a lot of great uh, transmedia products, TV shows and things that are on the screen, things that are on the iPhone, iPad, to really bring out support for early literacy and math. And really, the, the Ready to Learn project is all about bringing out those products and those resources into communities. For example, last summer I visited um, Cookville, Tennessee to see how the Ready to Learn products were being brought out to um, summer school programs, rec center programs, library programs, and really the whole community was using those resources as a way to bring learning to the screens that kids are so used to looking at screens. And now they're looking at screens for learning and for fun at the same time. And so. Collaboration also brings to mind collaboration among learners and with Wonderopolis' summer camp, uh, last summer we had learners in Kentucky speaking with um, citizens in Houston about different problems that they were solving through Wonderopolis' questions and, and challenges. And so you think about learning across generations and learning across settings and it's so affirming to see young children learning together that really, frankly, otherwise would not know one another. And they're using social media and platforms platforms um, that many educational institutions are offering. So we're very clear, obviously, about the need to end the summer slide. And, and clearly, with each of your programs and what you're doing, it, you're, you're really working to make an impact. But, but long term, what are we looking at? I mean, if we had to scale this and look at what 10 years will look like for some of these students and bridging the gap, what are your feelings around that? We want to see children of today reaching their dreams in 10 years, graduating from high school, moving on to college, and then be becoming the inventor that they imagine themselves to be, or the author, the poet, the artist. That's what success looks like in 10 years. And then the family's playing a part all along the way, not feeling more of the burden. We know parents today feel a tremendous burden for education um, and the success of their child and children, but we want them being a participant and enjoying that moment, being really thoughtfully engaged, but then in 10 years celebrating the success. So, I mean, that's a wonderful picture. I just want to add a couple snapshots to that. We want kids to be on grade level with their reading in third grade. We want kids to be ready academically for middle school, for high school, for college. Uh, we want kids to be excited about the fun and interesting part of learning, not any kind of idea of the drudgery of learning. We want school year program, the school districts,
to learn some things about the fine things that are happening in summer programs about how to make learning engaging, interesting, and fun, and take some of that engaging project-based stuff that's going on in the summer into the school year. What part do families play in this, and parents in particular? I mean, how, how involved, I mean, when we think about it in terms of the responsibility of the parents in all of this, we've talked a lot about educators and what you each can do, but clearly parents and, and families play a very significant role here. They do, and modeling is really um, important. Uh, we see that every day when, when parents uh, bring their children to the library, they ask, you know, what book would you like? And then they sit down with their child and then they read together. So modeling is important. Yes, we do have, we have the technology, it's there, but as far as what Larry had mentioned, uh, you know, early literacy is crucial. And to make sure that we start at an early age, uh, children will see that learning, it's not a chore. You, you don't, you know, you, you're, going, you're learning every day. When you say you don't want to read, you're reading every day. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Christine? And I would say parents really knowing their children, knowing their interests, their needs, and where they have room to develop. And that might be in a program that's run by a school district. It might be in something that's more interest-driven, like Wonderopolis. Or it might be something that the parent does alongside their child at a local library. Really just understanding the variety of options for summer programming and figuring out what's best for their child. You know, in the package that, that we shared and, and we saw that graft and what was happening over a period of time, it was really startling to see that this, this gap really widens at a particular age. And we've, we are all obviously very committed to, to closing that and ending it. But when we think about long term, what major steps can happen to just end it completely, what would that be? So there, there's a large picture view about the, the federal government and the state governments and the communities and the school districts all getting on board with the idea of having enriching summer experiences available for all youth. And we see a lot of that happening in a lot of places. Um, for example, here in Pittsburgh, the way the school district supports the Summer Dreamers Academy, the way the school district supports their, their quote unquote regular summer school for credit recovery for the kids to get on with um, graduation, the way they support what we call it, uh, National Summer Learning Association, a new vision for summer school, how to make summer school itself, even quote unquote traditional summer school, more engaging, more project based, more subject to youth choice and voice and um, their interests and really change that whole experience. Yeah, and therein lies perhaps a big part of the solution in that. So thank you all. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but we do appreciate you being here. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time for another edition of IQ Smart Parent Show after the show. Thank you.